Is Deepika present today? Hello. We can zoom now. Where is Deepika? <laughs> Deepika, are you there? Deepika, are you there? The CR? Sorry, I'm, I've always, uh, you know, entered the slide, so I can't go back and see the list. Anyways, okay, so today's topic is IMCI. And in, in, in the schedule, um, it's um, CV IMCI has been written. So don't get confused with that. CV simply stands for community based. Okay, community based IMCI. So initially, it was started at, as IMCI only which means integrated management of childhood illness. So in Viva exam also, externals, they, you know, frequently ask what is IMCI. So don't get confused. Okay, IMCI stands for integrated management of childhood illness. So integrated management is not a single management, single management of a single disease. We are managing various illnesses that is present in a child at a time. So what happens is that children, you know, uh, they present to a doctor with uh, various signs and symptoms not only the um, they don't show the signs of ari only but, but they have the signs of diarrhea also they may be having malnutrition they may be having you know anemia so you know all the uh, i mean illnesses can be present in one children okay one child so we need to manage in a combined way in a combined form we can't just manage ari and leave it and, and don't care about the diarrhea or, you know, um, uh, malnutrition or anemia. So we have to, you know, um, identify all the illnesses and then we need to manage it in a combined form. OK, that's why it's called integrated management of childhood illness. So basically we are uh, going to talk about the all the illnesses, major illnesses that basically, you know, causes childhood mortality and morbidity. And if you see the history, many children die before they uh, attend um, their first birthday. And after that, once they uh, survive, uh, again, there is risk of the death till they reach uh, five years of age. OK, so once they cross the five years of age, then um, the mortality and morbidity rate uh, decreases automatically. So the risk of morbidity and, you know, risk of death of children is more in infants in, and in under five children. So that's why um, this program has been launched. So if you, uh, I mean, um, see the, you know, past data, then every year more than 10 million children die in developing countries. So mind you, it's in developing countries, not in developed countries. In developed countries, you know, mothers are well fed, children are well fed, you know, they are, uh, you know, they get all the facilities, they get immunized, they get um, well nourished food, um, good environment. So um, child mortality and morbidity is very, very less. Okay, it's not the common problem. National, it's not the national problem in uh, developed countries. But if you see the developing countries data, many, many children, so 10 million, so you can say millions and millions of children die every year before they reach their fifth birthday. Okay, so and seven in ten of these days are due to acute respiratory infections, mostly pneumonia in case of children, diarrhea, measles, malaria, or malnutrition, and often to a combination of these illnesses, which are preventable and treatable conditions. So, most you know, if you see, if you try to identify the cause of death in these children, then out of ten children, seven children uh, die due to acute respiratory infections, or diarrhea, or measles, or malaria, or malnutrition, or um, they can be the, you know, they may die due to combination of these illnesses. So if you see, it's very, you know, ARI, acute respiratory infections, mostly pneumonia. Pneumonia is very common in children. They die of pneumonia. So pneumonia, they can be prevented or they can be treated with, an, with appropriate antibiotics, diarrhea. Simply, you know, you can provide uh, ORS and Ching, you know, and measles, malaria. So it's quite treatable. I mean, it's th these all diseases are treatable and preventable as well. Okay. And they are dying because of this um, common problems, which uh, that's why we are focusing on these problems. And we are, I mean, we have launched this program. OK, so if you see the situations in Nepal, so this is the data of Nepal. OK, this one is the general information worldwide. And if you see the scenario in Nepal, so in uh, under five mortality rate is 39 per thousand life births. 
you can write it down okay you can note this uh, data because in exams it can be asked in viva also uh, you may be asked about like you know what's the uh, under five mortality rate infant mortality rate and neonatal mortality rate of nepal so because you know it's a uh, common problem in, in nepal it's it's, uh, it's quite a big problem and that's why we are concerned about it and that's why it, it becomes so you know important topic for you so you just write it down okay these values are very important and i have taken these values from data from nepal demographic and health survey so this nepal demographic and health survey is published by nepal government uh, every four year okay so it was um, published in 2011 and after that it was published in 2016 now after 16 i think um, in 2020 it will be published a new edition will be published but it is not available yet in the internet so if you just happen to type nepal demographic and health survey 2016 this data will be there okay you can just download it but for your convenience just write it down under five mortality is 39 per thousand life births so this is how you have to uh mention this is the you know how you have to interpret and infant mortality rate is 32 per thousand life births and neonatal neonatal means from birth to 28 days of life okay infant is under uh, 12 years i mean what uh, up to 12 years and under 5 means from birth to 59 months 60 months means 5 years okay they have reached 5 years so under 5 means 59 months in fan up to 12 months and neonatal is up to 28 months so our neonatal mortality rate is 21 per 1000 life births if you go through the nepal demographic and health survey of 2011 and after, before before 2011 the values are the values were i mean you know their uh, values are higher okay as compared to these but they, uh, still this is high you know you need to reduce this further okay this is still high in number 39 32 21 so so what are the different factors contributing to various illnesses in the children first is poor living condition you know that you know this is developing country and hello hello yes good morning what happened lack of safe water supply so uh, we are talking about the remote um, uh, villages okay where there is no uh, safe water supply there is no uh, proper hygiene um, is a uh, proper hygiene is not maintained over there you know and overcrowding they there because of poverty you have been taught about the overcrowding hazards of overcrowding okay and what leads to overcrowding obviously because of the poverty and inability of parents to recognize danger signs so what happens uh, is that uh, you know we have uh, you know this uh, we don't have this awareness program we don't have uh, counseling for parenthood and all so parents you know they don't know whether you know the children um, i mean it's it's normal for the children or not if they are having fast breathing they can't recognize it if they are not eating properly and not feeding properly then they don't realize that they are one of the danger signs in children so they don't uh, go to the healthcare centers immediately so by the time they reach the healthcare center you know the children are already very sick and very critical so it's very difficult to save them and delay in seeking appropriate treatment see because since they can't rec uh, recognize the danger uh, signs so obviously there will be delay in seeking the treatment and once they you know reach the healthcare centers also poor quality of care provided at health facilities is another problem in in the remote areas in the villages in the developing countries and more than one morbid condition present in the children so what happen once uh, i mean the you know poor quality of treatment uh, is provided at health centers because there are you know i mean uh, the um, i mean doctors are not available there okay house of is available at a private healthcare center but at health post you know health assistants uh, assistants they look after the you know uh, children sick children they don't have uh, that uh, you know adequate knowledge and adequate information And then, and then, and then, what else? There is no um, um, lab facilities as well, and the children land up with more than one um, morbid conditions. The child may be having ARI and diarrhea, and is you know you can't um, manage properly, and that leads to the morbidity and mortality. So various surveys of the management of six six, uh, six children in most developing countries reveal that many children are not properly assessed. 
if they manage to you know reach the healthcare center at time uh, on time also they are not properly assessed by the health professionals available there sometimes you know health professionals are not available also in in the health post in the primary health centers especially in humla jumla you know and uh, pal uh, um, you know in the remote area remote mountainous hilly, hilly areas okay and and then solukumbu you know uh, himalayan areas it's very difficult doctors they, i mean uh, good hospitals are not available good doctors are not there okay and and treated and their parents are poorly advised and if they are assessed properly also parents are poorly advised you know um, give this medicine that's it they don't uh, tell them how to give uh, you know how much to give when to give and what are the signs they have to look after uh, at home also they don't um, give the proper advice and diagnostic suppose as radiology and lab services are minimal or non existent so um, you know you are living in a city area okay urban area if you you know go out of the kathmandu valley then just visit one or two healthcare centers okay there won't be any ultrasound machines there won't be any ct scan is something very very you know uh, it's, it's it's only available in the um, kathmandu valley in outside valley it's very rare in some some places only it's available mri you don't have x ray even the sim forget about mri ct scan you know even the simple x ray machine is not available ultrasound machine is not available you know um microscope uh, are not available you know lab uh, lab technology uh, technologists are not available so it's very difficult to manage and to diagnose and drugs and equipments are scarce and if you happen to you know identify the disease also drugs are not available okay antibiotics are not available so it's very difficult to manage especially in the developing areas okay and that's why UNICEF United Nations uh, Children Fund and World Health Organization they recognize the necessity of uh, child health activities okay in the countries that's why they uh, launched this they came up came up uh, with this strategy okay which is known as IMCI integrated management of childhood illness in 1992 ED okay so and today more than 100 countries worldwide have adopted it and nepal is also one of them okay we have also adopted it. india ha has also adopted it and the implementation of the imci strategy produced impressive results so what they found was in the uh, in all the countries where you know they adopted this imci strategy they found that the mortality and the morbidity rate of the children has decreased and in the quality of life of young children have improved all over the world so it was you know and it it yields uh, it yielded good results okay so now what is this imci so now after um, you know uh, giving you the brief introduction like you know what's the importance of imci so what is it actually so imci is an integrated approach so like the name suggests it integrated approach combined approach to child health that focuses on the well-being of the whole child we want the child to be healthy in all aspects physically mentally okay and it aims to reduce death illness and disability so we are not just trying to improve the health of the children uh, by reducing the death or illness but also by reducing dis disability and to promote and also we are promoting improved growth and development among children under five years of age so they should uh, be allowed to grow and develop you know in a, in a, in a very uh, you know good environment they should be given good uh, nutritious diet okay uh, so this is the aim of the imci we are focusing on the improved growth and development and uh, this is the fundamental right of every child and it includes both preventive and curative elements so if you see imci strategy you find that they have using um, they have used uh, preventive aspects as well as uh, curative aspects that are implemented by families and communities as well as by health facilities so imci is not only the strategy which is you know uh, implemented or used by the healthcare um, uh, providers but also by the families and the communities so you know com in uh, combined we are trying to save all the children so efforts are put in by the doctors um, the healthcare providers available in the in all the health centers uh, along with the family members and the community people okay that's how uh, they have you know engage everyone
So in health facilities, the IMCI strategy promotes the accurate identification of childhood illnesses in outpatient settings, ensures appropriate combined treatment of all major illnesses, strengthens the counseling of caretakers, and speeds up the referral of severe ill children. So at health and health uh, facilities, the IMCI strategy what does it do it is it promotes the accurate identification of childhood illnesses once the child comes there in their healthcare center all the healthcare prof uh, professionals or providers they should be able to accurately identify the childhood illnesses okay in opd and they should provide appropriate combined treatment of all the major illnesses and they also should provide counseling it strengthens okay in IMC strategy not only helps the healthcare providers to provide, you know, to identify and to provide the proper treatment, integrated treatment, but they also strengthen the counseling of caretakers. Okay, they also counsel the parents of the children. Okay, mother or father, like how to take care of the child, how to uh, give the medications at home, how to look after the child, look after their uh, diet at home. Okay, and speeds of the referral of severely ill children. If the children are very very ill and they cannot be managed at uh, health post or uh, at uh, PSC, then they just refer it to the bigger hospitals, tertiary level healthcare centers, like in, in Kathmandu or in Dang, where there are there is good uh, hospitals, okay? Um, good hospitals with all the equipments and all the health professionals. So in the home setting, it promotes appropriate care seeking behavior. So at um, home setting, IMCI strategy promotes appropriate care seeking behaviors. They promote parents to, you know, adopt this health seeking behavior. Like they, if they um, um, find out any danger signs or if they, if they feel that, if they notice that the children are sick, then they should immediately go to the healthcare centers. Okay. And improve nutrition, how to uh, give good uh, nutrition to their babies and, you know, what are the preventative care, like what kind of I mean, you know, uh, what should be taken in cold, uh, how the children should be well uh, protected from the cold uh, and so on. OK, and then how they should protect from all the infections and all the pollutions and the correct implementation of prescribed care. So if uh, they tell you, like, give this medication then they should know how much to give, when to give twice a day, once a day, twice a day for three days, five days or seven days. That, that should be uh, taught to them properly okay so that's that's how imci strategy is all about okay so why imci is better than single condition approaches why we are focusing on integrated management why not on single management single approach system okay strategy because children brought for medical treatment so what they found found out is that when the child uh, you know is brought to the opd this is they you know they are uh, suffering from more than one morbid condition. They are having breathing problem, they are passing loose tools, um, they are looking pale, you know, they are underweight, and and that, that's make, uh, that makes a health professional, you know, uh, very difficult to make a single diagnosis. It's almost impossible to make a single diagnosis, you know, because the child is having cough and breathing problems, the child is having fever also, passing loose tool also, the skin looks very pale also, so these children require, and most of the children land up with multiple uh, syndrome, okay? And these children, and these children require a combined therapy for successful treatment. So that was the need of the hour. So that was the need of the hour, okay? Many children were dying because, you know, uh, healthcare professionals at these, you know, primary level healthcare centers, they were not able to identify all the illnesses in the children, and they were not able to give uh, i mean you know uh, give treatment combined treatment that was the main problem that's why this imci concept came into existence because that was and that was the need of the hour at the time okay and that combines the treatment of major child illnesses so in, that's why integrated management came into the existence and it is cost effective as well because we are not um uh advising parents to um go for the test various tests which are very very costly you know, without doing any lab test, we are um, approaching towards uh, illness diagnosis and we are giving the combined treatment. So it's cost effective and it emphasizes on prevention of disease, promotion of child health and development and provision of standard case management.
That's why I am CI. Okay, if you um, have, uh, um, you know, if you have, uh, if you remember, uh, in Millennium Development Goal 4 uh, was to reduce the rate of mortality rate, okay, of under five children. And if you remember, we have already, you know, been, I mean, the motor, uh, under five mortality rate has been cut by more than half since 1990 in Nepal also, okay. We have been successful in, in attending MDG4, certain targets of MDG4. We have, you know, cut off the under five children's um, mortality rate by um, half, by 50% since 1990. And if you see how uh, we were able to achieve this MDG4, because WHO has adopted these four strategies to reduce child mortality. And out of these four, one was integrated management of childhood illness for all children under five years old, along with expanded program on immunization, appropriate home care and timely treatment of complications for newborns. And OK, these are, these are only three. Oh, this is not shown. Sorry. There's one more proper nutrition. OK. So one of the um, uh, out of four strategies, one was this integrated management of childhood illness, which actually helped the to reduce the in um, childhood mortality rate under five childhood mortality rate. So now IMCI basically focuses on these five major childhood killer diseases. These are called childhood killer diseases, major childhood killer diseases, because mostly children they suffer from these one or other or in uh, combined uh, uh, combined diseases, okay, and they die because of these diseases. These are the major childhood killer diseases, and IMCI focuses on these diseases only. So one is acute diarrheal disease, second is acute respiratory infections, third is malaria, and uh, fourth is measles. So imagine children that die of measles also. Now we have, you know, uh, because of the expanded program on immunization, so we give a uh, vaccine against measles and rubella, so the number has reduced significantly, okay? And malnutrition is the fifth one. So these major uh, diseases lead to more than 50, 70% of child mortality and morbidity, okay? So these are the major killer diseases. Why? Because this disease has led to more than 70% of child mortality and morbidity around the world, especially in developing world countries. So what is uh, not addressed in IMCI? Not all major illnesses are included. So, you know, rest 30% they die of other major illnesses as well, but it's not included because it's only 30%. So we are focusing on the majority, okay? So it doesn't uh, address all the major illnesses and it doesn't um, include the trauma and other emergencies, okay? It doesn't include if a child has died due to any road traffic accidents or any other trauma or other as emergencies. It's not included. So what are the objectives of IMCI? Why? What is the objectives of IMCI strategy? To reduce significantly global morbidity and mortality associated with the major causes of illnesses in children and to contribute to healthy growth and development of children. So there are two uh, major objectives of IMCA. One is to reduce the global morbidity and mortality significantly, not slowly, but very, you know, in a, in a, in a in fast way, okay, uh, uh, effectively, we are, uh, associated with the major causes. We are not focusing on the minor causes, uh, morbidity and mortality due to minor causes, but with the major causes. Uh, and not only that, once we reduce the mortality and morbidity, we also want to want all the children to have a healthy growth and development. Okay. So three main components. There are three main components of IMCI strategy. One is health worker uh, component, which focuses on improvement in the case management skills of the health staff through locally adopted guidelines. So all the healthcare workers who are working in health posts, who are working in uh, primary healthcare centers, district hospitals, general hospitals, they should be well trained. Okay, they should be well trained. They should have good skills of uh, ma management. Okay, through locally adopted guidelines, they have uh, been provided with standard guidelines. Okay, the protocols, guidelines to follow, and health service components by improvement in the overall health system required for the effective management by making available, you know, all the um, healthcare facilities like lab facilities and other. Uh, 
um, uh, drugs, medicines should be available. Okay, at the and all the essential drugs and and then what what the what else lab facilities and should be available and the work should be organized in the um, healthcare centers. Okay, and it should be monitored and supervised on a timely basis. And lastly, community component also there that is improvements in family and community healthcare practices. Now, family and community people should be aware about like you know uh, the um, proper uh, I mean how what is the balance side how to feed their children and what is uh, how to take care of the children how to uh, maintain uh, personal hygiene environmental um, sanitation so everything should be taught to them and you know how to take care of the sick child at home when to uh, seek for the healthcare center so this all things should be taught in this uh, is taught uh, focus in this third component so it is basically it has three components so there are clinical guidelines of imci okay so what are they imci promote evidence based assessment and management so it's not just like that it's not you know uh, i mean you know this is sat uh, down okay who and unicef people sat down and this uh, wrote down few um, guidelines and they made it uh, a standard one okay it is all the guidelines, all the things that is, you know, uh, included in IMCI is evidence based. OK, so whatever the, you know, it is, I mean, um, how the child is diagnosed with disease or how the how they are treated is all um, evidence based. OK, and by and they use syndromic approach. OK, and what is syndromic approach? I will tell you. So it, this IMCI is clinical guidelines. Is basically it's rational, effective, and affordable. You know, it, it try to uh, promote evidence-based assessment and management by providing rational, effective, and affordable use of drugs and diagnostic tools. You know, so what is happening is um, we are trying to assess the childhood illnesses by using syndromic approach, and we are trying to treat them with affordable uh, use of drugs which is very effective and which is very rational rational use of drug is there and it's trying to determine the health problems of the child so i'm saying basically it's runs to determine the health problems of the child and not only determine the health problems but to assess the signs that indicate severity of child's conditions so they should be aware like you no know, whether the child is having mild sickness moderate or severe illnesses okay it should be very quick in, in, in um, identifying the severity of the child's condition. Otherwise, they may, you know, lose the um, life of the baby and assessing child's nutrition. So, you know, IMCI not only look after the child's condition, severity of the child's condition, but they also look after the child's, you know, assess the child's nutrition status, immunization status, um, feeding, uh, feeding status and teaching parents how to take care uh, of the children at home, counseling parents to solve feeding problems, and advising parents about when to return to his facility. So it, it is a combined package. First, the healthcare providers they uh, find out the illnesses, then they provide proper treatment, and not only that, they also teach the um, caretakers like how to look after and to take care of the children at home. Okay, and when to come back for the follow-up as well. And recommendations for children, the parents understanding of the advice and and we have to show that this IMPI focuses on, you know, assessing the parents' understanding the advice given by the professionals and for following their how to assess the first dose of drug. They just ask them to give the first dose of drug in front of the doctors or patient guidance. Okay, that's how I am setting the guidelines. Uh, is about. And then by assessing the child, a combination of individual science is one of more classification. So IMCI, I've been mentioning diagnosis, 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 but you know, don't diagnose the child. But just to make you I mean, understand, you, know, you, know, you know, have to correctly identify and diagnose. You know, don't use the term diagnosis, 
because they are not, uh, you know, asking any test to be done. Okay, so unless we um test the child with various lab uh, tests, can't uh, diagnose disease. So you know, we are using syndromic approach to uh, assess the um, signs and symptoms in the children and then after that after identifying all these uh, signs and symptoms we classify this disease okay and um we do classification not the diagnosis just remember this okay so in the exam in pvq if we ask what is the class uh, write down the uh, i mean what is the probable classification uh, of the uh, disease uh, uh, i mean you know what is the um, I, I mean classic uh, what is the um, classification uh, no no what is it what is the probable classification in this child okay this kind of question is asked and and you get confused so you start, start writing the classification of ARI you start writing the classification of diarrheal diseases uh, severe moderate mild okay uh, no dehydration some dehydration so classification means write down the diagnosis and why we are not using the term diagnosis we are not uh, doing any lab tests okay we are just using the syndromic approach so IMCI classifications are action oriented. So IMCI class, once we classify the illnesses in children, you know, we immediately know, you know, all the healthcare facilities, it is uh, uh, prepared in such a way that once the child is classified into various uh, classification, you know, you just know what to do next. It's action oriented and allow a healthcare provider to determine if a child should be urgently referred to another healthcare facility. You know, once we ask questions, you know, and then we classify the illness, then we immediately know whether a child should, a child's condition is very, very severe and the child should be urgently referred to another health facility with um, good equipments and good facilities or if the child can be treated at the first level facility. So what is first level facility? Primary healthcare centers, health posts, or can we safely manage at home, okay? Whether it should be treated at the um, first level facility or can simply be, uh, simply prescribe drugs and send them home, okay? So these are these kind of things can be, you know, immediately uh, decided once the child has been um, classified, okay? Uh, so this is how the IMCI works. Now, what is syndromic approach then? So I I don't know whether you are familiar with this um, term. So syndromic approach means nothing, but the syndromic approach is an okay. So is an answer to many of the obstacles to efficient case management in developing countries. So in developing countries, you know, because it's for developing countries, so there is financial crisis, there is no good infrastructures, hospital uh, infrastructures, there is no uh, good. Uh, I mean, the, uh, all the medicines, essential drugs are not available and um, healthcare centers. So what happens? Syndromic approach is the best answer to um, to to deal with all these obstacles. Okay. So it is based on identifying a syndrome. So syndromic approach is nothing, but you know it is based on identifying a syndrome, a group of symptoms. So what is syndrome? It's a group of symptoms. So symptoms means what the patient feels or ha or has noticed. Like, okay. Like mother comes and say that my child is having. Uh, fever, my child is having stomachache, my child is not eating properly, my child is having, uh, um, you know, uh, noisy breathing. So this is the, these are the symptoms, what the patient feels or has noticed and um, easily recognized signs. Signs means what the clinician finds on examination, whether the child is having um, pallor, the child is underweight, the child is uh, having chandis, the child is having measles, uh, you know, so whatever, you know, the doctors finds, uh, it's a sign. So it's a group of signs and symptoms associated with the syndrome has been identified, treatment can be provided for the majority of the organisms responsible for that syndrome. So, you know, the signs and syndrome, uh, uh, signs and symptoms could be due to majority of the organism. One, there, there could be, uh, you know, one specific organism or more organisms responsible for that particular syndrome. So once we are able to identify the syndrome, we provide treatment in such a way that it covers all the responsible uh, organisms. I mean, organisms responsible for that disease. Okay, for that syndrome. So syndromic approach allows healthcare centers, uh, sorry, healthcare workers to make a diagnosis without sophisticated lab tests. Several syndromes can be managed easily and rapidly using clinical flowcharts for diagnosis and treatment. So this is how
Itu Okay This is how the syndromic approach looks like okay see for severe dehydration signs are mentioned here on the left side and classification is given here so in the exam right classify the illness in this uh, child this is how the question is formed okay and if once you know you look after the two or three signs and if two or three signs are present in the child then you come to a conclusion that it's a severe dehydration okay that is the classification of the child and immediately and then once you decide it's a severe dehydration so treatment is given just as soon to it just follow this in treatment protocol okay so if it is um, if the signs and symptoms are, uh, are suggesting some dehydration only and you have to follow this treatment protocol and if the signs and symptoms is indicating no dehydration then you have to follow this diarrhea okay this is how it is Ten twenty-three. So, in context of Nepal, if you see, see the chronological development of the name of the program so it's come a long way. If you see, it was uh, started as community-based integrated management of childhood illness, okay, CIMCI in Nepal. Then um, it became community-based integrated management of newborn care program because they included the first seven days also. You know, they have not included the first seven days of life, and they realized it should be. They should be. Uh, I mean, no. Should include that seven days of life also. I mean, all children, um, with you know, um, um, I mean, you know, within seven days of life. And then again, then they change the name coming uh, to community based integrated management of neonatal and childhood illness. So, this is how you know they have uh, changed the name over the uh, years. So, if you see, it was first started in 1983 AD in Nepal, okay, and it was. Um, Uh, it was first, I mean, you know, the programs uh, was uh, only um, uh, focused on control of diarrheal disease programs. It was control of diarrheal disease. The, the program focused on diarrheal disease only in 1983 when it was, uh, uh, you know, the it, this program start was started in Nepal. So gradually in, in 1987, they started this uh, acute respiratory infection control program as well. And in 1997 or 98, they combine this ARI with CDD, okay, ARI and uh, the ideal disease control program was combined and they named it as CDAC, okay. And uh, after one year, they also added two more components to it, which were nutrition and immunization programs, okay. And um, again, uh, and this was separate in Nepal, CBAC was a separate program and IMCY was uh, piloted in Mahotari district and was extended to the community level as well. So, you know, they focus on uh, diarrheal disease, uh, ARI and um, just immunization and nutrition program only and they call this CVAC program, okay, community based ARI and diarrheal control uh, program. Then and they, uh, you know, IM, IMCI program was piloted. Piloted means it was the, uh, uh, it was in testing phase. They, they tested, they start, they started this program and to to test whether you know how to see the result like whether you know it will benefit or not whether it will be successful or not so they piloted it okay uh, it's like test uh, testing the program and then it was extended to the community it was first started uh, tested in Mohotnari district and then they extended it to the uh, company as well and then finally the government decided to merge the CBAC into IMCI in 1999 okay okay I've uh, one second Okay, so the thing is in Nepal, um, this program was started much earlier. That's why it was not named uh, INCI. Okay, because this program started in 1992, and in Nepal, it was started in 1983. Okay, 
So in 1992, IMCI must have been launched in the you know um, different countries, and Nepal just thought to adopt it. Okay, and they found that the result was very good. So because it integrated other diseases as well, like measles, malnutrition, and malaria. And that's why they combined IMCI and CVAC in 1999 and they named it as Community Based Integrated Management of Childhood Illness. Okay. So uh, then again in uh, 2071, you know, they integrated a CVIMCI and CVNCP, Neonatal Community uh, Neonatal Control Program, and they it became CVIM IM and CI in. 2071 only okay so this integrated package of child survival intervention addresses the major problems so everything is same you know the the psyche and imci program in nepal also the cvim and ci uh, addresses major problems of uh, newborns such as birth asphyxia bacterial infection jaundice hypothermia low birth weight okay and counseling of breastfeeding and um, so uh, the young infants for two months and 59 months uh, uh, the 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 uh, from birth to the two months, and for the young infants from two months to fifty nine months, um, it addresses major child illness like pneumonia, idea, I mean, See, I told you that they they focuses on the five major killer diseases in under five children, but it was you know they focused more on this program, but not to you 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 can't miss out the uh, the thing that they have included the first seven days of life also later on okay it was not there they didn't focus on for seven days um children's illnesses so once they for, uh, included that uh, new uh, new nets also in their program so new nets they have very different um illnesses as compared to the other children so this bacterial infection birth asphyxia is commonly seen in uh newborn children just born in okay hypothermia low birth weight so these are the problems basically seen in uh, uh, from birth to two months old babies and two months old to 59 months these are the common problems so it addresses both okay just remember that and the goal was goal is same see just compare the objective of the you know objective launched by the uh wh and unis now nepal's goal to improve newborn and child survival and healthy growth and development is quite similar and it was the target was to reduce under five mortality rate uh, to 28 by 2020 and reduction of infant mortality rate to 75 so it's still high right under five was 32 right i showed you in the my first slide 32 so our target is to reduce it to 28 by 2020 and re that is under five mortality and to reduce neonatal mortality to 17.5 which was how much 21 thing right so to reduce we need to uh, uh, reduce further to 17.5 by uh, uh, 17.5 um that th uh, five five in per thousand like births okay by 2020 so um, whether we have been able to achieve it or not we have to look uh, look this into annual health report published by nepal government okay so objective is quite this is not asked this is just to show you that you know uh, this program has been i mean adopted in nepal also and it's quite similar to what uh, they have been following in um, other uh, parts of the world okay it's similar to reduce neonatal morbidity and mortality by promoting essential object uh, newborn uh, care and services see goal is the major thing i mean you know a vast thing like what is our goal and then to achieve that goal we need to break them into various objectives like okay and to reduce first to reduce neonatal morbidity and mortality by promoting essential newborn care services to reduce neonatal morbidity and mortality by managing cause and to reduce morbidity and mortality by managing major cause of illness among under five years children so it's basically um, the objective of nepal uh, imnci in nepal is to reduce neonatal morbidity and mortality among uh, uh, i mean the morbidity and mortality rates among units and under five children okay uh, so it's with major causes of illness so the new approach was uh, which is known as vision 90 by 20 so it's uh, what is that it is cvim and ci program has the vision to provide targeted services to 90 percent of the estimated population by 2020 as shown in the diagram below so vision 90 by 20 means they wanted to provide um this you know, um, 
services to 90% of the estimated population by 2020. And what are these services? Institution delivery. So most of the infants, they die, you know, because uh, because of the home deliveries, you know, they are not uh, delivered by the trained um, uh, the birth attendants. They are delivered at home by their mother in law So this is one of the cause of uh, um, under five deaths, okay, under five mortality. So uh, this we want to provide, you know, I mean, encourage institutional delivery and you know, make sure that they are, um, you know, they are accessible to a medical stamp once they uh, cut cut off a uh, medical cord and they spread the medical cord from the mother, they apply chlorhexidine, four percent chlorhexidine around the medical uh, stamp, okay, to reduce neonatal sepsis and access to ORS and gene to reduce the direct measure illnesses. So, ninety percent covers. So this is the region ninety by nine, ninety by twenty. So this much, I mean, is a brief uh, introduction, like, you know, what's the program, how it is uh, conducted in Nepal. So as as you can see, as you can compare, it is quite uh, similar to the um, objectives uh, by the WHO and UNICEF and all the programs, you know, it's, it's the activities conducted is also quite similar to the WHO and UNICEF um, uh, launch IMCI strategy. OK, so this much introduction uh, after, uh, I mean, I will conclude after this first introduction, okay? I'll not go further. The time is already 10.33. So what I would like you to do is go through the chapter and go through the, all these objectives and this um, these things I have taken from the annual health report published by Nepal government, DOHS, okay? Uh, um, for the year 2018 and 19, okay? It's there. Don't worry. Everything is there. Just, you just have to download it. And rest, you can get all the this uh, all the things in the park book. So just go through it. Just remember the full form of IMCI objectives, guidelines. What is the importance? Why it was started? You know, what are the major uh, killers in childhood illnesses? Who are the beneficiaries of IMCI? What do you mean by young infants? You just go through it. Okay. So in the next class, which is on Thursday, I'll be talking about the different elements for IMCI case management. How you you should actually proceed. Okay, once uh, so many of you uh, must be from MOE, so you must uh, you will be you know posted in the remote area. So um, in those areas, you have to follow this. Okay, uh, in 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 NMC KMC, don't, we don't follow this because we have all the lab facilities. We have uh, skilled, trained, qualified healthcare professionals. So don't use it. This is for remote areas only. Please keep this in your mind. So if you are going to uh, serve the uh, you know. Um, healthcare centers at the remote areas, you have to follow this. So, um, this, uh, you know, I mean, I hope you will, you know, um, listen to this show very enthusiastically. Okay. So, in my next class, I'll be uh, telling you how to proceed, how to follow the IMCI flowchart. Okay. So, if you have any questions,